Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another episode of The Review Crew on CH Tranquility. I am your host, Jamie Laszlo. We got David Galler in the house. We got Craig Kaminsky in the house, my two brothers from Monster's Den. And do not adjust your TV, your smart TV, or your tablet, or your phone, or your laptop. We got a bona fide rock star in the house on The Review Crew right here with us. You decided to join us, our little show here. Todd Latore from Queensryche, lead singer of Queensryche, even has his own solo career. See that? He released this album about uh, three years ago. I never opened this. I'm such a ah. guy on CD. Ah. And I CD. <laughs> I'll right on. So, yeah, this is a special edition of the Review Crew. Awesome. We're going to go around. We're going to talk about some uh, new releases that we're all happy about or maybe not so happy about. We'll find out. We'll go around the room. And how I'm going to start this off is I'm going to go by rock star status first. So, okay. Craig, Davey, you guys will always be rock stars to me in my book. But I think Todd got you a little bit on here. So we'll start with Todd. And go around the room. Todd, I, I understand you got something from 2023 October that might have slipped on by us here at uh, Sierra Tranquility that you want to make sure we know about. So Yeah. What... Okay. Well, first of all, thanks for having me. It, this is really awesome. It's fun to do. Um, I have seen stuff that you've done before um, where some people will go track by track I'm not, I'll, I can go through some songs. I don't want to bore the audience with every detail of every song. Um, so the the uh, first album that I'm going to talk about is from a band called, well, there's various ways to say it. Angela, most Americans say Angelus Apatrida. That's probably the easiest way. Um, some say Angelus Apatrida or Apatrida. It depends on how you want to pronounce it. But for simplistic terms, we'll just say Angulus, A-N-G-E-L-U-S, Apatrida. Um, they're a killer thrash band. Um, they, they're from Spain, and I think they started in 2000. I can't believe we're already in 2024, to be honest, and that's a 24-year-old band. But nevertheless, um, the album is called Aftermath, and I actually... Um, learned of this band through um, our producer that's done the last several Queensryche albums. His name is Zeus. And he was contacted to mix and master this record. And I knew when he did the one before, but that's how I learned of, of them was from our producer. And I'm a big thrash fan. I love thrash, old school stuff. And I never heard of this band before. Lo and behold, they're a huge band in Spain. They're getting a lot more popularity. They're playing stuff in the U.S., um, doing like the Milwaukee Metal Fest and other other things like that. They they tour a lot. Um, but this record came out in October of 23, as you said. It's got, oh, let me see how many tracks are on it. It's got 10, 10 songs on it. Now, I'll preface this by saying, I, I did do a guest appearance on this. That's not why I'm talking about it at all. I it's don't a, know about that. Yeah, yeah. Cheeky, yeah. cheeky. <laughs> I swear. Okay. Um, it's not it's not because of that. But um I was honored to do it. It was really cool to be because I, I like the heavier stuff. Um, I think when they initially started for a little background on your your audience, um I was reading that they they were kind of classified as like a um, a power metal. In fact, let me just look here really quick, if you don't mind. Um, that they were they were kind of considered more of a of a power metal thing, but they're really like they're they're a Spanish thrash metal band, kind of speed metal. Um, of this of the song, what I do like about this band is. I find, especially on this record, you can tell like a growth from from the albums. They've got, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six records that they've done. Um, they're with Century Media Records, uh, our label also with Queensryche. Um, and they've just been pushing them a lot. They've got great, great support from them. As far as the album goes, I mean, you get 
classic thrash. They're more mo- they're they are kind of modern sounding thrash, uh, but it's just that classic head banging thrash sound. There's a lot of groove, so you'll kind of hear some influences, almost like Pantera ish. Um, you will hear in the choruses what I noticed they've done on this record especially is the choruses are more instead of like a gang vocal that's uh very common in thrash a very kind of more like just spoken shouted words with a gang vocal thing this has more melodic singing in the uh in the choruses or even in some of the pre-choruses that I really really like um They've got uh, start starting out the album is I mean it just hits you right in the face. They're they're really aggressive. A lot of you know just that fast thrash beat. You don't hear blast beats or anything like that of some of the more extreme metal metal um, bands out there. But the first song is called uh, Scavenger. It's really fast. It's got killer grooves. It has a lot of double bass. The guitar work is really really great with this band. If you like megadeth the rhythms of megadeth if you like purposefully written solos um like you hear in megadeth for example or pantera it's not just a bunch of shredding that doesn't sound like it was purposefully written just for the sake of playing fast i don't hear that at all they've got harmony guitar solos which is really cool um the second song is called cold and it has a very classic thrash head banging groove they play octave chords which i'm a huge fan of testament likes to do that sabotage would play some really nice octave chords um and again i think that the melodic choruses kind of separate them a little bit from a lot of the other thrash bands out there and give them that power um, metal vibe that some people feel a, a, a little bit a little a little bit of that um you know testament always had uh kind of singable choruses, right? Instead of, not every chorus was just like a, a word, but something a little more melodic that you can get behind as a singer. And so I really like that. He'll use some vibrato here and there. Um, the third track is called Snob. This features uh, Jamie Josta, everybody knows from the band Hatebreed. Um, it's a mid to te- uh, up, up tempo intro, has like really fast uh, thrash verses. And the chorus on this one, again, I I hate to keep bringing up this band, but it's reminiscent of a Testament style phrasing. And I love that band. And maybe that's, I'm hearing those commonalities with them. Um, Similar, not not copying by any means. Uh, Quick little blaster, a few song, other song titles. Fire Eyes has a really uh, nice, clean guitar intro. And then the band kicks in again with these like guitar octave chords that um, is a sound that I really, really love. Um, I'm not going to go through every one of them. There is a a song, track six, called To Whom It May Concern. This is one of my favorites on the album. Uh, It starts with a really clean guitar intro with these like nice harmonics. And then this clean singing comes in uh, with vocal harmonies that are really cool. Uh, It's only guitar and vocals during that part. Then the band kicks in with very melodic uh, guitar melodies before it turns into like a full-blown thrash song. Um, And then later in the song, it turns into like a clean ballad style, kind of revisiting that intro uh, guitar and vocal melody, but now you've got the full band behind you. The the solo work is really, really tasty on this song, on the whole record, really. Um, And that's something that I also liked. As much as I love thrash, you know, I... I don't know, because I, I'm a singer. I mean, I'm a drummer first, but because I'm a singer, I'm always looking for that that melody somewhere. Um, as much as I love extreme music, when it's all very staccato and lacks some sense of melody that's memorable or has some space to it, um, it becomes very linear to my ears. It's, you know, it's subjective, of course. Everyone has their own different taste. But I just love listening to this record and this band. If you guys aren't familiar with them, you should check them out. Uh, Track number seven is, again, very 
thrashy, lots of double bass work. The drumming, the the drums on this in this band are killer. Um, there is one song though that kind of made me scratch my head. In fact, I called Zeus about it and I was like, hey, dude. So there's a song called Rats on track five. And the verses are almost exactly like Pantera's song, um, Heresy. Yeah. You know, uh, it's like the same kind of delivery. You could, It's almost, it, it's so similar. It kind of was like, ah, I don't know. But then it starts to veer away and it becomes their own thing. And of course, when you listen to all kinds of music, we kind of have a tendency sometimes to to kind of reference what we think it sounds like. And I don't know if they were aware of it. I have to think they were, because some of the guitar work in this, it has that Southern metal, that kind of groove, that power groove. So you hear a lot of groove with this band, you know? It's not all just blazing fast stuff. You get a lot of really cool groove. Um, and then there's uh, track number eight. Um, again, track eight and nine. I'm just going to tell you they're thrash. I don't want to get into every detail. Let You guys can go listen to it and check it out for yourself. And then the song that I happen to be in is a ballad. Uh, it's track number 10. It's called Vultures and Butterflies. And... Um, it's it's really pretty clean guitar. I come in on on the ending of the two verses and then kind of leading into this kind of bridge um, to the last. There's this bridge part where I get much more like aggressive in kind of a fry vocal, like a screamo fry vocal. <laughs> but But the vocal is very like... I mean, I've heard people say very uh, Bruce Dickinson-ish uh, on the parts that I did. They basically just, you know, they said, hey, we'd love to have you on this. And and I really like it because this song breathes and this song is like a really heavy hitter ballad that turns into like a thrash song, but it still has that that right. that space, you know. So that's the record that I wanted to share with everybody. A lot of people here in, in the States, at least, maybe don't know about them. They're making a lot of headway. They tour their asses off. They're, they play all over Europe, and I think they've done South America, I'm sure. So Angulus Apatrida is the band I'm talking about, and the record is called Aftermath. Go check it out. They've got some really cool videos. If you like thrash, I mean, they've... It, they've got everything. They have really tasty guitar work. You'll hear little influence slivers of Megadeth, Testament, Pantera. Dare I say a, a tinge of Slayer? Maybe. Um, it's it's you know it's not happy major sounding chords. You know we I like my metal dark, um, that plays more into the minor the minor sounds that are a little more have tension, a little more haunting than your your um your happy kind of uh major chords where it's just double bass through the whole thing and it's just fast fast music um it's really cool stuff you guys should check it out if you're into thrash and really great guitar i know they're huge van halen fans i know one of the guitar players has like a van halen tattoo or something like that on his leg so these are like guys that really care about crafting nice guitar solos. So if you're into that kind of stuff, I think you would appreciate it. All right, cool. Yeah, go uh -huh. check it out on YouTube. All the bands we talk about here on the Review Crew, it does not hurt. It is not painful to go listen to these on YouTube for like, I don't know, 30 seconds to a minute yeah. just to see if it grabs you real quick. That's totally. A... Yeah. Totally. Not Well, not only that, but the forum that you have here right where you have a following people know kind of what you like in various things it's sometimes nice to hear somebody like oh i i've listened to their reviews before and they really turned me on to this band i had no idea about right they they might take a little bit more time or interest in some of these suggestions that you guys have versus just seeing an infinite list of stuff on the right hand side of youtube where you're like recommendations and then maybe you don't really know 
you only heard 30 seconds, but that was totally a piece that didn't really represent what the album would be. Right. So I think people might appreciate some of the value of, that the commentary brings. Yes. Sometimes I wish we could do more than just two a show. Yeah. Craig, what do you got for us? All righty. I got a couple of, uh, well, two different split EPs courtesy of Heavy, Sykes Re Heavy Psych Records. Uh, the first, and I have a high tech Prezi here, so I'm going to show the artwork. And Ooh. once you, once you uh, see these, you'll be glad that I did show the picture. Oops. That I did show the picture. I never understood why everything has to go in reverse when a picture is shown. Yeah. <laughs> Weird. So, everything everywhere all at once all right first one this is by uh these are by two two bands this is uh geezer from kingston new york uh great great trio that i've had the pleasure of seeing live uh at least once and the second band is called isaac i, I believe it's pronounced isaac uh spelled like chris isaac uh, the singer i-s-a-a-k as as you see listed here the title of this is the way that they do this there's kind of like it's kind of like there's two titles separated by a colon so the way i have this classified in my in my itunes is that i i i have geezer listed as interstellar cosmic blues and then i have isaac listed as the riffalicious stoner dudes that's how this is uh, how this is written on the bottom here but it this is uh, seven seven songs total. We got four by Geezer, all four bangers. They are all uh, just groovy, heavy, you know, not uh, basically mid paced. Uh, Pat's uh, the the the, uh, the vocalist and gu uh, guitar player. He has such a he's such a cool uh, uh, voice and everything. Very accessible and just. This this would be considered uh, stoner rock, but I think it's it's very accessible, heavy enough, not too heavy. You can understand the vocals, and it's just a pleasure to listen to. Four songs, twenty one minutes. So each song, uh, ti the titles, Acid Veins is is uh, the first one, Gr uh, just a great opener. Little Voices, uh, track two, track three called Mercury Rising. Each each song just I think they they're each about four or five minutes long. Just grab you, just you know they're in and out. Just perfect little songs. The the last song I have a tough time pronouncing is on 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 neurophrenia. I don't know. I gotta look. I gotta look it up. It's uh, o o n e i r o p h r e n i a. I I I gotta look it up in the dictionary. I don't know what it means. I don't know. I don't have uh, my Latin down. But uh, great great four songs from geezer if you already have some of their other albums uh groovy and uh uh stone blues machine yeah exactly Th those two if you like what you hear from those you're gonna love the four songs uh that that they provide to you on this split ep this the uh, second the second part of it by the band isaac they are from genoa italy uh the songs are the songs are in english uh, to my understanding, they uh, had either broken up or just haven't released anything in quite a few years. But this is three songs, 15 minutes. And again, all three songs just grab you and are groovy, heavy enough, and just pleasurable to listen to. The uh, Track one, The Whale. Track two, Crisis. And track three, Flat Earth. All, all just really fine albums to listen to. This is available through... Heavy Psych Records, and you can also uh, stream or stream this or on uh, iTunes or uh, uh, through Amazon. Uh, however, however you uh, to download this, or take a listen to these on YouTube. I'm pretty sure that they they are there. But again, if you if you like what you hear from uh, what you like what you've heard from Geezer, and check out their other albums, the ones the ones that Jamie uh, held up. They also have a, a few other ones. I have a self titled by them as well. If you like those you're definitely going to enjoy the four songs that they have to offer on this. Uh, and this just came out in May, May, June or so, because uh, that, that's when I grabbed these and cool artwork to boot. So uh, that's my, that's my uh, first go round with this. My sec, I have a second one uh, when we come round again. You know, I've Ooh. noticed with these splits when these bands do splits, you would think they would put their 
subpar stuff on these splits. Uh, let's save that. It's not great yeah, for the yeah, album. Maybe we'll put it on a split one day. I know. Yeah, I mean, it's it, great. Each, each each one of them, it's like you know, four songs and three songs. It's like I, I you know, I I could take a full album. For right. easily from both where it's like it gets done and you want to listen to more or yeah. start them over again so they're really enjoyable i i uh, definitely recommend the, this one all right yeah davy what do you got something that we don't normally talk about on the old sea of tranquility i'm sure well yes as you as you responded to someone last month i'll always bring up something indirific or off the beaten path that won't get discussed here on a wednesday with our lord and savior pete uh, why did I call him the Lord and Savior? I don't know. You want me to edit that out? No, leave it. And I may, may get on more shows. Okay. Um, so the first one that I'm going to talk about is uh, the new album that uh, came out um, this year. I think it was a few weeks ago. I can't quite remember when. Uh, Nathaniel uh, Ratliff and the Night Sweats new album, uh, South of Here. Anybody know Nathaniel Ratliff? No, looks um, like I don't. I'm googling him right now. The um, so he he starts out as a solo artist in the 2000s and has a kind of indie folk, uh, bright eyes, Conroe burst, uh, Bonnie Bear kind of thing going on. Um, but then he hooks up with this band, uh, the Night Sweats, and starts to go into a much more soul vibe and some really intense soul as well. And they release a self titled, um, just called. Nathaniel Ratliff and the, the Cold Sweats in 2015. And his career moves in a totally different direction. So a bit like Con Roberts, he kind of jumps back between um, doing some, some really heavy rock soul stuff, heavy rock soul, so not heavy, heavy music, but heavy rock soul, to more confessional singer-songwriter in the traditional sense. Um, or Jack White's done similar, who I've just talked about with Jamie online, his new album, which is pretty fantastic for people who want a recommendation quickly on that. Jack White's new surprise album, uh, very much a throwback to early White Stripes for the first it's time. Heavy. It rocks. Yeah, really good, really good um, garage blues rock, which isn't surprising for his early years, but he's not done that kind of thing in a long time. Um, but this, um, to go back to the one I'm actually reviewing, um, is a kind of mishmash of what he's done before. So it takes the, the soul vibes and it takes the uh, the singer-songwriter vibes and throws them together. Um, like a lot of artists, they had a, um, a COVID, a post-COVID album um, that came out. And I don't know about you guys, but I was kind of getting very jaded with so many artists bringing out albums where you would hear the same things about... This is a response to isolation and lockdown um, sessions. The yeah, that kind of thing. closed yeah. doors recordings. The blah, blah, blah. yeah, and it brought us back to our roots, like that, that kind of thing. Um, and it just kind of felt a bit okay. Everybody's saying the same thing. Um, so it, I, I'm kind of enjoying this next group of albums from all my kind of favorite artists, and the same is true here. This is his best album quite well. Um, the opener. David and Goliath has got kind of offbeat Harry Nielsen vibe to it in, the, in that it's kind of not funny, but there's a sense of, of humour to it. Warren Zevon, um, to throw in another kind of reference there. Or the title track, um, South of Here Itself, very reminiscent of the band, um, circa the Brown album, or a little bit of Blondie Chaplin and Ricky Fatar stuff with the Beach Boys from the early 70s, like... Hold on, dear brother, that kind of thing. Um, there's a little bit of, of Jason Isbell in here, the kind of muscle shoal sound that Jason Isbell gets sometimes um, with, with, with his stuff. Um, Call Me Wherever You Like is a kind of messy 2000s, very alt rock kind of track. Uh, Time Makes Fools of Us All um, is maybe my favorite track on here. Very passionate rocker. And it's about the bass player, Joseph Pope, who was diagnosed with cancer. And he's a childhood friend of uh, Nathaniel's. Um, and quite a lot of the lyrics on this album talk about their relationship, starting an accidental fire and getting away with it in the small town that they, they grew up in. Um, and, and this one, he sings about shaving his hair, which I end up have just done, but um, shaving his hair in solidarity um, with you know, his, his brother effectively, but his, his best buddy after his cancer diagnosis. 
but you would think that would be a right downer. No, it's a soul stomper. He does it as a rocker, so it's a song of defiance. So no better label for, for that kind of thing to be on than Stax. Um, so Modern Revival with Stax has got uh, Nathaniel and the guys on it, which, yeah, pretty, pretty fantastic. Oh, it's upside down. Stax. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty great stuff. Um, there's a little bit of the Hold Steady in here. There's a little bit of the Gaslight Anthem. When it goes a little bit more acoustic, you can hear a little bit of Uncle Tupelo. Um, there's quite a bit of Jeff Tweedy in his different projects in here. Um, but then when the horn section kicks in, and it's never too over the top, you start to hear a little bit of um, maybe Bruce Springsteen's more mid 2000s stuff like The Rising or Magic, that kind of that kind of vibe. Or even that kind of gentle period of Van Morrison from the 70s, that kind of mid period after the, the really big stuff in the mid period. So really recommended for anybody who kind of likes the sound of something to put on on a Sunday afternoon, maybe. Um, that's, that's laid back and, and playful and fun, but it's got a little bit more meaning than, than you'd imagine. Um, so yeah, recommended very highly. Nathaniel Ratliff and the Night Sweats South of Here. That's the kind of stuff I like to listen, like when I'm in the car and I'm driving and I'm, yeah. I can just like, because I don't usually play a lot of music too much in the house, but like when I'm in the car and I'm driving and doing something, that's something, especially like in the evening, you know, mm -hmm. that's something I can like absorb really well when I'm in the car, you know, driving by myself or something. Me too, because if I listen to something too intense in the car, I'll kill thousands of people a year. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I, I'm gonna check. Been there. I'm gonna check it out for sure. Yeah, yeah, re really strong stuff. His back catalog's full of it. If you, even if people aren't quite sold on that, go back to 2015 and check it. Self-titled, just Nathaniel and the the. Does it does it nature. sound? Is it because I was reading that he's like um, kind of folky? You know, mm -hmm. is it? Does it have? Do you hear a lot of that influence, or is it um, more like yeah. rock blues? Yeah, but again, more again in the kind of Van Morrison way that you would Okay, hear. okay, I got music, you. Where you can quite clearly hear that he's definitely a soul singer. Gotcha. So he's not going to be sounding like Ramblin' Jack Elliott. Um, <laughs> right on. Eager, you know? um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's not uh, Woody Guthrie or anything. People shouldn't be put off by any kind of folk mention. It's that more uh, modern version of folk. If you like, again, Conroe, Birth, Monsters of Folk kind of thing. Okay. Body there. Right on. Cool. Well, I was going to say, Jamie, what did you pick? But he's left us. Oh, there he is. Hi. All right. What I picked was an album. It's not even out yet on Bandcamp, but they have it on Amazon for some reason. And that is a band by Demiser. Ooh. Miser from South Carolina. But honestly, maybe hell if you listen to music. Form 2018. What do they play? Black and Thrash. With touches huh. of traditional metal. You might like these guys, Todd. That, Album. Sounds, that sounds interesting, too. Late to the Sights. Released August 23rd, 2024. But it, like I say, you go on Amazon. I, I got one a month early. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. So uh, is the album good? Well, I got on board with these guys on their first album that came out in 2018. And then they have an EP before that. I don't have the EP, but I have the album before uh, that came out after. And I... I really liked it. And I went to go see him live and they were good. They, they were a young band. I think they got better days ahead of them playing live, but that first album was really good. How are they on this? Well, Feast comes on and right away, I got a lot of notes here because I can't remember shit. Right away, they get, get in that thrashy goodness. There's a, uh, you know, they, they make sure they throw in that traditional metal into the thrashiness, into the, the black metal kind of vocals, but you can understand half the things he says. It's not, that intense you know if you're not used to these kind of vocals maybe it'll be intense to you but if you listen to some death metal it doesn't sound really that intense um then slate the scythe comes on and and it's got the extreme metal start that that pisses off traditional metal fans because they're like yeah that's awesome and then here come the vocals and they go fuck uh but you know it, it, it this these songs are great but they do sound like a little bit like your soul's getting ripped apart in hell, but in a good way. It feels painful, but the pain feels kind of good in a weird way. 
Uh, carbonated speed, it, it's it's amazing. This is like neck break speed, but it's an, it's amazing how they can write these songs and they're all thrashy, but not samey. This is not a samey album. Every song has their own characteristics on this. Uh, Fallow Master, the Fallow Master is ridiculously fat, uh, fast, but so much fun. This band is so tight too when they play. Then you got a little interlude, Acoustic Passage, then Total Demise, second half of the album, starts off on a very strong note. Killer guitar work on this and great guitar tone throughout the album. Uh, Hell is Full of Fire. Here's your sing-along chorus. Here's your crowd pleaser. This is a song where they play, if they went to like a metal festival, and there were some bands that were extreme metal, some that are just traditional metal. And you got the older guys in the back when the extreme metal guys come on. They're like, oh, I don't like these. Well, did you like me? Uh, but this song comes on. Then all of a sudden, they're like, that one wasn't bad. No, that one, that one wasn't bad. This is that kind of song. Uh, Infernal Bust, good. If, if this album does have filler, it might be this song, but it's good filler. It, 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 a lot of bands would die for this kind of filler. And the last song is In Nomina Bafome. I don't know what that means, but it's a big eight minute epic. It's a big eight minute, eight minute epic, and it's almost proggy. It twists, it turns. I have a feeling, um, you know, and it's got crisp, great production too, and the drumming. So the, the drumming, the drums sound good, but um, I have a feeling this, this might be what they might be doing, you know, uh, uh, seeing into the future, longer songs, technical death metal, a little proggy. We will have to see. Uh, I'm excited for the next album already. And this one isn't even fucking out yet, <laughs> officially. So yeah, Demiser, if you want a, a report card on this, oh, holy shit, you're getting A's. Production, A, that's how you produce a metal album. Songwriting, A, like I said, not samey. It's amazing how they do that. Musicianship, these guys can fucking play. The guitarist and the drummer especially. Even the bass player, do, 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 do every once in a while. And vocals, you can hear what he's saying. It's kind of extreme, but it's not really. So everything, an A. So you get kisses from your, from your teacher on that report card, and she's a hot teacher too. So that's my review. Demise. It's almost like uh like Opeth, you know, they have their prog, their yeah, clean but then brutal, you know, brutal vocals and dark stuff. So, yeah, I've everybody every album that you guys are talking about, I'm pulling up a new tab and typing in so that I can go back and when we hang up, I'll I'm going to be listening right. to some of that Maybe stuff. Maybe if you listen to this in the car, you'd be running over all kinds of people. Good. I'll I'll have to do that. More, more than usual. That's awesome. Some I can't wait to, to see the right. headline. Todd Todd Latore, least singer Queens right, grows nuts, runs over pedestrians. Hey, I don't want to see that. Mm -hmm. All right, Todd, started. what's your second pick? I hear it's a remaster that I'm very curious about. Yeah, so my second pick is um the new order from probably one of my all-time favorite thrash bands, Testament. Normally I would try to do something a little bit more diverse in what I'm talking about than just thrash. Cause I do like a lot of different things. Um, but again, I, all these new releases aren't really on my radar because I'm just so busy and I can't keep up with everything. Um, so Testament, the new order. Um, I mean, for us older guys, we know what that record is, but to younger fans that may not really know it, this is, this is just one of the most all-time best thrash metal records ever. Um, I think the original one came out in 88. Yep. And this is how I actually discovered Testament was they had, we had a local station here called uh, V32. And it was like a real low budget local um, uh, show. But that's how I discovered um, Halloween and... Um, and testament for sure and it was the song uh i think trial by fire um that was, but anyway, first, that was the first video i saw my brother and i saw the video for trial by fire and we were both like hey this is what the yes say. yes you know it's like and it's and it's it's like i gotta go out and buy that right now yeah you know, it's it's, like, it's so know. good so you know this has the original lineup with uh lou clemente clement however you want to say it on the drums um 
And, you know, Alex Skolnick is a, one of my favorite guitarists of all time. It, we've become friends over the years. And same with Chuck. I, I know all those guys. I, I, I'm not I'm not friends with Steve, the bass player. I've met him a few times. But, but uh, you know, this record. So let's get into what actually, from what I understand, I was going to call him, call Chuck, but they're on tour in Europe and I didn't want to, I didn't want to be a pain. So I went back and I watched a bunch of interviews and some things that he's done talking about this new release, which was a remaster. So back then, before you had all, everything was digital, it was analog. And as I understand it, um, they they did not have, so they, they released the Legacy and the New Order, but I'm focused on the New Order because that's my favorite. Um, they they only had the tape of the of the mixed record. So I don't think they had the multi-track recordings to go back and remix the record and then remaster. So for those that don't know how this works, most of your audience probably does, but it would be like in a very generic sense, you putting on an old tape and being able to EQ things and, and make it sound. Of course, mastering does much more. It pulls out, you can, when you're you're limited when you don't have the multi tracks when you just have like just a mixed record you can't go in and control just the bass drum or just the snare and eq only the guitars here or this and that there are some things that can be done with certain frequencies that kind of reside on the outside of the of the mix when they're mastering where you can you can try to enhance or pull away some things to my ears um I listened to the original and the new one, and I'll be honest, I don't really hear much of a difference, hardly at all. Um, maybe it's a little brighter, maybe. I, I did see some reviews, and some people thought that um, one guy said that he thought it was a little quieter. So maybe they gave it a little more headroom. Um, I don't know exactly what was done, but it was, it is a remastered version um, so like everything that you got in 1988, when you bought the record, there's like a photo thing in there. Um, there's a little bit of differences into the quality of the photo. The, the artwork has this iconic kind of, um, uh, skeletal face, like a skull on the original one. It was blue, gray, smoky blue on the new one. It's like, it looks kind of purple. So I don't know if these were changes they wanted to make to differentiate it from the original that this was the remastered version, or if this was just a printing thing that happened and they were like, oh shit, we're stuck with it. I don't I don't really know. But it's something that I'll probably ask the guys the next time I see them. What I do like about, regardless of the sonic differences, what I love about it is it's really just highlighting one of the best thrash metal records of all time, in my opinion. And it's something to talk about again. So for people that weren't aware of it or, um, you know, it's, it's like, Oh, what's this? If you weren't really into it and then you go back and you listen to it and it's just, I don't know why Testament wasn't part of the big four. They should be. Um, they're just so amazing. And, Again, I went back and I listened and and I would encourage you guys to go. You could just go on YouTube and listen. I know it's not the same as like the high fidelity wave, wave, you know, waves of it. But um, they, you know, they probably ran it through some other compressors and and, you know, try to make it the way that maybe they thought it should sound in 2024. Again, you're you're kind of limited because if you don't have the individual tracks where you can isolate each and every recorded thing, you're, you're kind of stuck with the mix and then you try to like polish it up with a, with a mastering job or something like that. But um, you should go, you know, be curious what your guys thoughts are. And Jamie could shoot me an email or do a group. I don't care if you guys have my email um, and and uh, and kind of A, B, the old one and the new one. And even if there were sonic differences that you could noticeably hear, then you get into the discussion of, you know, we love the original way, right? Like there's something about that, uh, that analog 19, you know, mid to late 80s uh, 
sound of recordings that if something were like pristine and polished and, and just the way we hear music today, I don't even know that I would like it the same because there's just something, I don't know if it's nostalgia or that's just the way that I learned to love that record and those songs. I, I like it if it's not as bright and perfect and polished and everything as, as, uh, as what's done today. But uh, that's the record that I wanted to kind of talk about and and let everybody know that's aware. If you guys are fans of that, but you don't follow the band, a lot of people don't even know, you know, what they're doing. But they love they love the band because they remember they did a reissue of the Legacy and the New Order. But the New Order is, uh, I mean, such killer songwriting. And you go back and you revisit that they had their own distinct sound, their own style mute you know just musicianship for days but um that that was the band that turned me on to thrash metal and testament and overkill are my two favorite thrash bands of all time and um and then this other band angulus apatrita is is a band that i love listening to today but i always go back to to this record if i'm doing work around the house or i'm in the garage doing stuff and i'll bring my laptop out there and i'll you know, pull up re records that I have. I I play the new order still as if I was, you know, 16 years old. I still listen to kind of a lot of the same stuff I did in high school and in my early 20s. I, even though I've learned, discovered other bands, I kind of find myself still going back to, to the roots. And when like all the, when, when these bands had a real identity of their own, and it didn't sound just like so much of what I hear today. It's it's and and singing, you know, there's not a lot of where are the great singers today outside of power metal in the metal genre. It's just pure screaming. And as much as I like gutturals, you know, and, and death vocals, more more like black metal vocal. I'm, I'm a big fan of Aboth. I, I've come to really love his his music and, you know, Behemoth, that kind of a guttural. You know, in the thrash days, Chuck Billy, you know, Disciples of the Watch, you know, open or up you to that gross. I mean, <laughs> no, you really didn't hear that back then, not in thrash. And uh, I will forever be a fan of Testament. Testament, the new order. Go listen to it if it's been a while. And if you uh, are into collecting things and just as a collector, um, you should check out the uh, the reissue remastered uh, version of the new order and the legacy. So they did the first two records. Yeah. And he, if you have record stores by, yeah, I know a lot of people don't couple, a couple Columbus, we got like six or seven. It's ridiculous. Yeah. But if, if you go buy these, uh, like the new order, it's, it's fun to go up to the counter and slap it down again. And for one second, <laughs> you feel 17 again, buying it again. It's kind of old as new kind of feeling. It's so good. You know, I mean, sometimes, you know, we, we still make records, right? I mean, most bands out there that are producing new material, they make vinyl. It's I think vinyl out, it's out selling CDs. Oh, yeah. And I still, I still listen to CDs. It's weird because, you know, I made a bunch of my, my CDs and vinyl and I even made cassettes cause I just thought it was so cool. So I actually have cassettes of my, my own record, <laughs> but there's just, I mean, we can all remember, not to like hijack the show here, but we can all remember when we used to go into a record store and it was a vibe. And remember when, well, first of all, you couldn't hear shit. You didn't know what it was. You just kind of went on the artwork, right? And you were like, this looks fucking badass. I got to get this. Then, then they had these little stations with headphones and you could like preview the album, you could put the headphones on. And then it almost felt like, like, That's okay, nice. wow, I get to, I get to hear it before I buy it. This is amazing. Well, now, you know, I have to tour eight months out of the year to earn a good living because nobody buys, I mean, people buy records, but the numbers are, are not even comparable. Um, but yes, when you go to a record store and you buy that record, you, you do feel how it used to be. And it was a whole experience and you would pull it out and read, I would read bands and like they would thank other musicians like wow they're friends with that guy too like i thought it was so cool how do they know each other you know and 
listen, li read about the gear that they use. Now, I mean, the younger generation that grew up with YouTube, there was no YouTube, there was no internet, there was none of that stuff, right? So the whole experience of of discovering music is just not the same. And it and you know, I know I sound like the the old guy now, but it really was better. I mean, yeah, this is at our fingertips and it's, it's convenient and cool, but I loved I loved that mystery of not knowing what every musician, you know, what their house looked like or what they ate for dinner or, you know, this constant like engagement with every, you know, everybody's entitlement to feel like, you know, I follow you and you should be replying to me on social media or I don't know. I liked it better when there was much more mystery. Um, anyway, I'm ranting now. That's the I mean, record. I, I, I bought the new, I'll just quick say, I bought the new order just on the on the strength of seeing the video for Trial by Fire. So that's one out of what, 10 songs so I. That, that I knew. But then so it's like, you know, you, you, you get it, you take it home. And it's like uh, Trial by Fire's track three, I, I believe. And then, uh, you know, you got to get uh, Eerie Inhabitants. Oh, this is great. You know, and then you know, tell the world the new orders here, you know, it's like, it's, all right, the, try, now we're, we're on a roll, then, oh, here's the song I know, that's a good one, now Into the Pit, I mean, it's, yeah, it's so good, you, you knew, you know, like, you knew, like, one song, you know, if you were lucky and bought it, I mean, but I, I'd be curious to hear, like, the remaster of this myself, just yeah. because I remember that even though it was on, like, what, Megaforce Atlantic Records or whatever in, in 88, it still had a little bit of a muddy sound to it uh as even even comparing it to uh something like exodus you know that was on like combat records i think and you know th so i mean it was on a, a, a smaller label but yeah. it, it still had that same uh type of quality sound to it and everything so uh but yeah no i'd be curious to, to uh, we've uh we've done shows music. we've done festivals and stuff where they're uh they've played and and we've done things um, together in that capacity and if I'm not side stage watching the band on the stage from the side, I'm in the front. And usually because they their crew will know that I'm I, I can get access, I'll go in the photo pit and I'm literally a 17, 18 year old <laughs> headbanger. And I know all the words and I know every break and I know and I'm headbanging right in the very front with the crowd because I just it takes me right back to the to that. Oh, I love it. <laughs> anyway. My favorite Testament album, Low. Love Low. That's a great record. It combines like the record. 80s style and like their heavier shit that was going to come. Perfect. Yep. Killer record. Killer record. Yep. Yeah. Greg, what split you got for us? This one I listened right. to. Ah, okay. Uh, let me pull again, pull up my Ooh. open. Wow. And this is my second one here. So this I gotta this, learn how to wait, wait. I gotta learn how to do that if I ever do this again. You're like, <laughs> you look too cool doing this. Yeah. He's got the TV. Me and Davey are we don't have anything. Total Google. Uh, how to how to oh, no, Davey even shit. had the product. I don't have anything. He's got a TV. <laughs> well, the, uh, this also this release is also on Heavy Psych Records, and this just came out recently as well. Uh, this is Nebula and Black Rainbows. Hmm. Uh, the the title uh, of this again, it's uh, written in small print, uh, as you see here on the bottom here. But uh, it goes as in search <laughs> in search of the cosmic tail, crossing the galactic portal. So again, I kind of split them up as uh, saying the nebula part is in search of the cosmic tail and the black rainbows part is crossing the galactic portal. Now I will, st I'll start with black rainbows uh, black. This, this is again, also uh, nice and compact three songs, 17 minutes. Uh, black rainbows wow. is a band that I've, I've uh, come to uh, come to discover via Pete's uh, Pete Pardo's re reviews of these, and also from uh, Karen La Preziosa. Hi, Karen. Uh, you know to uh, yeah to uh, you know see those. Yes. Question. Sorry, I sound ignorant. No. Is the band is the band Nebula or is the band Black Rainbows? Two different bands. Uh, oh, Nebula. And it's a split. Like, it's a split EP, oh. like the like the last one. So, okay, uh, I understand. So the, so the, the uh, but I'm starting with uh, Black Rainbows. They got they, you. 
the, uh, Black Rainbows is from Roma, Italy. Uh, and again, uh, sing, sing in English. Uh, they have quite a few albums out. I personally only own uh, two of them, uh, which, are, which are their last two, which is Super Skull and Cosmic Ritual Super Trip. I love both of them. Yeah. Just heavy, groovy, uh, gr nice vocals, uh, not too long, not too short, uh, just a very accessible stoner rock. Biker rock. I mean, I, yeah, stoner bike bike biker rock uh, okay. with with a, with a touch of some psych some psychedelic type sounds with them. So okay. really really cool. And again, three songs. We got the uh, the secret track two is called Thunder Lights on the Greatest Sky. Uh, you know, great song. Track three is called Dogs of War. All three of them very enjoyable, and uh, again, highly recommended if you if you're already familiar with uh, Black Rainbows. If not, go check them out. They have at least six or seven albums. Uh, they they have quite a few. Again, I I personally only have the last two, but um, but they're they're definitely uh, a group to to keep your eye on. Now, the sec the second one, Nebula. <laughs> All right, I I love Nebula. I uh, Pete and I did a ranking of of Nebula back in January, and uh, so this was one of those band. Uh, ne for those who don't know, Nebula originally was an offshoot band of Fu Manchu. So the the original three three singers, uh, excuse me, the original three members of Nebula were all ex members of Fu Manchu. So uh, they, but Fu Manchu was total uh, stoner uh, uh, driving driving. Uh, almost like surf metal type type songs nebula is more psych psychedelic still heavy and it's a trio you know you only got one one guitar player with that uh eddie glass uh to this day is eddie glass is the singer guitar player he's the only the only original member left of the of the of the three that started now but i i love nebula's output from 97 their debut in 97 through 2009 they then took a 10-year hiatus and uh then and and have put out two full-length albums since then they they are definitely my least favorite of of their catalog reason being before they were a stoner rock band with touches of psych now they're like a psych band with touch with touches of stoner rock in them it's a lot more trippy and weird and uh almost strange for the sake of strangeness uh with with their songs and unfortunately the the three that are on, on that are on this uh the three songs are again an extension more of an extension of what they've been doing over the last few years i had my hopes up with track track one is called acid drop and and the uh, music starts and i'm like awesome you know nebula this this is the nebula i like but the vocals, God damn it! They, it sounded like the band was record. It sounds like the band was in one room, and the vocals were recorded at from at your neighbor's house from the bathroom with the shower running. I mean, it is literally like they're if you're if you're listening, you have all the music and the vocals are like way in the back, like this this big. You can't you really can't hear them very well. And it's just, it's like, oh, come on, man. I, I, I really, really wanted to enjoy this more than what I did. But you know, track one, it was the best, uh, the best of the three called Acid Drop. Track, track two, Eye of the Storm, is, is again more of the same, a little trippy and weird. I like the music. It's just that the singing is just kind of out there. The, the last song is, again, was okay. <laughs> the last song is called Caesar the 34th. Uh, there, and the re and it's as as a person with with the, the job that I have I, I have to be kind of accurate with my job Caesar is misspelled and it pisses me off so you know as we all Caesar is you know see as in Julius Caesar or Caesar salad or whatever C A E S A R and then 34 is written in Roman numeral so X X X I V this is spelled C E A S S uh, e A E E R A R. So as as a stickler for detail, it annoys me that they didn't spell Caesar correctly. And I looked it up on a few different things because I thought, oh, is this a typo on on iTunes or something? 
No, it's not. They just uh, someone did not spell check Caesar properly. Uh, you know, whoever whoever put this up. So it, this was, you know, three songs in 15 minutes. But it, it, it's just I, I wish it were better. Uh, but I I highly recommend Lively. Nebula's albums from their debut in 97 up through 2008 or 2009's Heavy Psych. Th those are stellar releases by them that are just really enjoyable their last couple again if if more psychedelic uh sounding uh, things are more uh you know your way you'll definitely enjoy these i don't highly dislike those they're just not my preference uh to hear uh from nebula but uh, you know they're still out there. You know touring. They just they just played recently, actually, uh, uh, in Philadelphia, not not too far from me. So uh, I would hope they still play some of their some of their classics. But uh, but unfortunately, these three songs are more like the last few. So uh, that was that was my second release. I heard uh, cool. when I listened to that, I heard elements of Sonic Youth, yeah, and early Nirvana, like Bleach. Nirvana. Yeah, it's Noisy. like I said, they're just a frustrating band for me because I love them so much. And then, but it's just the last few years have just been just really frustrating for me as a as a fan uh, of them. So, yeah. All right, Davey, right what do you got? Well, uh, the new one from Highly Suspect on Roadrunner Records, as above, so below, with the pretty cool cover. I don't want to praise the cover too much because it looks a bit Masonic to me, so I don't want to get strange emails from some kind of lodge. But um, so it's it's a good album. Um, in places, it's a very good album. In 2019, they started to move away from the more... They started, what, about 15 years ago or so? But in 2019, um, they started to try and get Gasp popular. So they had guest stars on quite a few of the tracks and the guest stars were all over the place. They had Gujira on one track and then on the next track they had Young Thug, the rapper. So it was completely all over the place. It's like, what, what, are you, what are you going for apart from just a vague notion of being eclectic? And they didn't seem to have an answer for that. And then on the next album, they went really poppy, which they'd been kind of Southern rock with these ma mammoth... Uh, riffs and huge choruses and in a different reality these guys were, were on track to be rival sons but they kind of moved towards a much more poppy direction trying to be you know Dave Grohl you know celebrity friends kind of thing um, going for the mainstream I think this is a step back in the right direction and um, they've got some really good tracks on here like the opener Summertime Voodoo massive riffs coming back uh, Eerie organ in the background, chicken scratch licks. Uh, Matt Stevens is a great vocalist and a great guitar player. It's his guitar playing that I really like most of all about the band because he's got a very Neil Young like sound. So instantly I'm on board for that. He's got a very, especially Neil Young with, with the horse um, playing off of Pancho or, or uh, these days playing off of uh, Mika Nelson. Um, suicide Machine, so again, even the tracks sound like they're referencing other artists because there's Suicide Machine, which was born to run Bruce Springsteen. Um, that references uh, cocaine quite a lot throughout it, and that kind of introduces you to the theme of the album, which really like concept album about addiction and about uh, one particularly heavy binge on drugs, but it doesn't really rub your face in it too much. And again, the music's quite joyous in places it kind of takes you on a musical journey through the the binge so you have the highs and you also have the crashes and the lords which is quite an interesting way of doing it. it's musical storytelling as well as as lyrical storytelling um blue-eyed angel has some lyrics in it which i must admit made me think oh fuck off just fuck right off um tell your mama you ain't coming home because you just met fucking indiana jones no, no. Hey, what was the? What I'm gonna? I want to put us in a search. Can you? Highly repeat? suspect. Highly suspect. That's the name of the band. Yeah, as above, so below. Is I, I'm a huge fan of uh, Rival Sons. So when you said that, that yeah. uh, piqued my interest as well. 
Yeah, I mean, Pete and I reviewed the last few Rival Sun records. Absolutely loved them. Um, these guys, again, kind of diverge from that. But you can hear some of that still in here. You can definitely hear that Matt could have been that, in that kind of move, in that kind yeah. of classic rock. Because there's still quite a lot of that in here. There's still quite a lot of classic rock in here. More than there has been in quite a few albums from them. Um, Run for Your Death, um, uh, More Pills, I think is the subtitle on it. Kicks things back into gear. There's kind of piercing screams on it, up tempo mm-hmm. pacing, percussion, um, which is kind of offbeat and quirky. Gives it a bounciness, which very different to what you'd expect on a track about, again, it's, it's called Run for Your Death, More Pills. So literally running towards an overdose. But it's about that rush, you know, a bit like Heroin by the Velvet Underground. It's about the, the rush of the, the junkie that song. So, so it's kind of, again, musical storytelling. And it, it's got this great track towards the end, um, Melatonia, which is spaced out and strung out, really well sung, gorgeous stuff, um, with just the electric guitar almost being strummed lazily. And that's very much the come down after the highs of where we've been. And I thought, what a brilliant closer this would be. Unfortunately, they put a track on after that, which yeah. you have the perfect closer to your record thematically and musically. And then they follow it up with another track um, called Then Mickey 2, which just isn't I mean, seven minutes long. You could just get rid of it and the album works not just as well, but better, to be honest. But there's other great tracks on here, um, kind of big stadium stuff, like uh, a track with a weird title, 8th of October to August the 17th. Um, very much a huge sound, very anthemic, um, which which could have could have kind of illustrated what they, they again could have been in the, the mid 2010s if they'd gone in this different direction, which they unfortunately didn't take. Um, but again, if you just lose that 11th track, then Mickey 2, and then you trim a couple of the seven-minute tracks and six-minute tracks, because it's about an hour long, I think you've got a really tight 45-minute album here. Really, really tight. That would have probably served them a lot better. Um, I would probably also have had somebody look over Matt's lyrics and go, don't call yourself Indiana Jones. You just look like a twat. That's just nonsense. Um, but you know it's it's a really fun record in places until you start to think about the lyrics, and then it kind of makes you almost feel guilty that you've been kind of bashing your head to it because it's it's got a lot of darkness and a lot of autobiographical stuff in it or biographical. I think he's singing about a friend in a lot of places and relationships with addic- people with addiction problems and whatnot. Um, but you know, in honor of Todd. Um, the verdict on this, a toxic remedy of inner unrest, I'm just going to do some puns now, about people who think they're bulletproof, there's another one, but just lead selfish lives, there's another one. The fallout, there's another one. There's redemption, even if it's where dreams go to die. <laughs> well done, well done. A whole load of Queen Drake, Todd era songs for you at the end there. Right, but right. Actually I'm going to check it out. Here. As my actual review, that actually does work because that, that does some uh, quite a lot. Even right on. Story yeah, I'm going to definitely check it. that one out too. I'm going to check them all out. All right. Yeah, on Roadrunner Records, highly suspect. Bit of a bad name. It's not the most memorable thing. As above, so below. There cool. All right. Let me take us home. Um, I always like to do, I always like to find some singles out there that's that's floating around. And it was tough this week. I'm, I'm not going to lie. But I did find a couple. Um, Snoozer by Wizard. W-I-Z-Z-E-R-D. These guys are a stoner rock band that I saw live about a year and a half ago. Pretty cool. Like seven minutes long, doomy, long, epic. Like it. Joe Bonamassa and Train doing Hold On Loosely. I don't know why they're doing this, but it just seems unnecessary. Mm-hmm. It sounds like a 38 special version. Yeah, don't go with Train, man. Don't yeah, go with that's train. a weird combo, isn't don't take, it? Don't take the Train. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I was I was surprised to see Soul Asylum is still around. High Road. So I oh, clicked yeah. on the Soul Asylum song and uh kind of sucks. Gotta say, kind of sucks. But if you like Soul Asylum, be happy they're still out there, I guess. All right, so I was listening to this band called Duel. Who? Duel. 
from Austin, Texas, formed 2016. What do they play? Stoner metal for those who also like to drink. Album, Breakfast with Death. There's Death there having some breakfast. And released <laughs> July 5th, 2024. And I started to notice that it resembles this other album I'm listening to as well. They're very close, very similar. And that is the new Orange Goblin. Who? Orange Goblin formed London, England. Uh, from London, England, for 1995, so they're no spring chickens. Uh, what do they play? Drinking metal for those who like to also get stoned. <laughs> album Science Not Fiction released July 19th, 2024. I was like, these, these albums sound very similar. They both have nine songs. They both came out in July. So I thought, what if I put Duel in an actual duel against Orange Goblin? How would that, and not just any kind of duel, a lightsaber duel. Mm -hmm. So you got Death Vader here, with the death guy from the album cover. And you got Goblin Kenobi here with the face from the Goblin uh, Green. We, uh, we can't uh, see the head. Goblin, oh, um, and I thought, let's do a duel here. There's nine songs. Real quick, honestly, out of all the bits I've done on this show, this, pro this is probably going to be the lamest. But we'll get through it together, all of us. Because we're not just a crew, we're a team. That's, that's a low bar, Jamie. It's yeah. a low bar, but yeah. just wait until we get uh, try to slug through this. All right, Ancient Moonlight. Good solid rocker opening. Uh, fire at the center of the earth is mine. Better riff, cooler bass line. Death Vader's getting hit. You don't want to be hit. You don't want one of these. That's how the game is played. Satan's Invention. Uh, best song. I'm just going to tell you right now. The 19 songs, that's the best song. Uh, not Rocket Science. Good, fast-paced rocker. Little Preachy. And it loses points because it rhymes fire and desire. All um, right. You cannot do... After the year 1995, no one should be ry rhyming fire and desire. It's so cliche. Everything before 1995 is grandfathered in. You're fine. Anything after 1995, stop doing it, especially in 2024. So remember that, Todd, when you're writing the next Queensryche album, no fire and desire rhyming on that album. So, big hit. Big hit right I, here. I will, I will say that the song Not Science Fiction on... That orange, that al, that song smokes. I love that song. You know, and, uh, and uh, I celebrate the entire catalog of uh, Orange Goblin. <laughs> I know you do. And, uh, I know, but and for so, me, but I love that song. Cool's getting a huge hit right there, and where it counts, right in the little lightsaber, if you know what I mean. Uh, Chaos reigns. Uh, hard hitting guitar solo is great. Uh, ascend the negative. I like the doominess of that, but. Chaos Reigns is raining. Another hit right in the shoulder. Uh, okay. Uh, False Hope Diet is groovy, doomy, and a, a, like a big seven-minute epic. Uh, fa fallacy is, let's see, fallacy, chorus that you can chug beer to. I really like the chorus there. I really like the epicness of this one. So fallacy and ascend the negative nope sorry false hope diet they're tying right in the middle locking swords right in the middle they are tying pyro mean potatoes hard rock cemetery rats mean potatoes metal but sounds like testament you'll like this one it sounds like like new school testament uh so since todd is here we'll give the testament sounding song the edge and the hit goes that way berserker big riffs with almost psychedelic course uh, the furry fury of a patient man, more energy in that one. So we're going to go hit over there in the belt, not below the belt, just at the belt. Tigers of Destruction, not bad, not very memorable. Gemini, uh, Twins of Evil, not bad, not very memorable. Uh, Gemini is five minutes long, though. Uh, Tigers of Destruction is a lot shorter. So because it's shorter and filler, we are going to go this way. Greet the dead over here. Do me and references Dungeon Masters. That's cool because I'm a nerd. Uh, the Justice Knife over here. First half is okay, but man, it's got a jam solo. Jamming sessions and guitar solos at the end that's really fucking badass. So, it goes that way. Burnt the Earth. 
um, well, burn the earth, sorry. It's a little shouty. It's it, 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 the, the way they shout, burn the earth, burn, eh. uh, and it's transmission over here. It's okay, but I, it's a song that I feel like I've heard a thousand times. It's just cliche stoner rock. So, but this one over here, burn the earth, at least it sounds like it could be fun live with the whole crowd shouting it. So it goes this way. So what you got here is a fucking tie. And it's like those comic books you used to buy when you were a kid. Iron Man versus Spider-Man. Who's going to win? You get to the last page. Fucking tie. Nobody likes that shit. So what I'm going to do is because that chorus over here uh, is so good, the drinking chorus, that I'm just going to give a slight edge over here and duel gets to win. So if you're going to buy one album this year in July, there's a Stoner Rock album. You can't go wrong with either one, but Duel gets a slight edge on that one. Or just John Williams' Star Wars soundtrack. <laughs> yes, that one too. But I, I will say that the, the, the Orange Goblin album, that's their first album in six years uh, yeah. since The Wolf Bites Back. And uh, I think it's it's really good. And I believe it's their 10th album. Um I saw them live a couple of years ago with uh, Atomic Bitchwax opening up, opening up for them, who were also phenomenal, and yeah. uh, they they put on a, a fantastic show. So um, I'm glad to see that they came back with uh, with, with a new album like that. And and uh, like I said, I I enjoy uh, the new new uh, Orange Goblin uh, science not fiction. I've been listening to them a lot, and sometimes I find myself when I'm listening to one, I'm like, which one is this again? Oh yes, it's Duel. Because you need to try and get them on the monstrous thing because they have got loads of song titles named after Hammer movies and B movies. So yeah, you definitely have something on that. With either one. Uh, real quick, I got my uh, Let's Get Physical yeah. page out there. If you want to come join me on Facebook, I have a page that's dedicated to everything. Physical media. We don't talk about streaming there, Todd. We talk about buying books and Blu-rays and 4Ks and cassettes. If you make a mixed cassette, we talk about it on there. Uh, whatever. If you can put it, because you never truly love something unless you can put it on a shelf. So that's cool. all I got. Todd, what, what's Queensryche up to? And I should say, when I introduced you, I, I sold Queensryche short. Because oh. what I should have said is Queensryche 2022 Laszlo Hall of Fame inductees, Queensryche, because I do my own Hall of Fame every July. Wow. I conduct five artists into my Hall of Fame. I sit out on the deck. I play each artist for about an hour and a half as I slug beers down. I'm like, Laszlo, that's like, like seven and a half, eight hours of slugging beers down while you're listening to music. Yeah, something like that. And uh, so you went in in 2022. So you're not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, I get it, but but you're in mine, and I think mine is cooler anyways. So well, there you go. And Thanks Tess so much. went in too. So when you're talking to those guys, Chuck Billy mentioned, hey, you're in Laszlo's Hall of Fame. Have a drink over it, reminisce, talk about it, and <laughs> go on. I, I don't even I don't even think Maiden's in the Hall of Fame, are they? No. no. Yeah. First, so first round inductee, eleven years ago, first round Laszlo Hall of Fame. There you go. See, mine is cooler. So what's Queensryche up to? I, I see you're coming to Columbus in October. Yeah, so, um, you know, we finished a big tour, the Origins Tour, which is the playing the EP and the Warning in their entirety. Um, and then when that finished, uh, right now we're just doing one-off fly dates, playing various shows, doing um, kind of a more diversified set list of, of brand new stuff, super old some deep cut stuff and then a lot of big hits and we'll be doing that until we do our second leg in the u.s of the origins tour and that'll be um october through i think november 16th or so something like that so the the first tour that we did was all your um kind of first major markets this one is the secondary and tertiary markets which is which is great because, you know, we're hitting a lot of places that are a little less popular, a little more off the beaten path. And people really appreciate that. They're like, wow, nobody comes through here. You yeah. know, maybe your numbers aren't quite the same because they're not the heavily congested areas. But we love playing those those areas, too, and um, giving 
those people an opportunity to see the band live if they're not able to drive hours to a major city that we have already played, for example. So we're doing the Origins tour in the U.S. in the fall, and then we will be going back to Europe for the first time since 2019, um, doing the Origins tour over there. So hopefully that will be a success over there. Um, and on the U.S. tour, we have a really great guitar player. If you guys are into the blues rock thing, Jared James Nichols. Yeah. Um, he's a really, really great guitar player. Um, great singer, too. I saw him open up for Ted Nugent. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And and he's done, he's gotten some really great shows uh, on tour with other bands, Zach Wild. Um, I think he toured with Skinner. He's, he's done a bunch of cool stuff. And we thought instead of just getting like another metal band for this, you know, let's, let's, uh, let's go, let's bring this guy out with us. So when we were looking around at people that were available and wanted to do it, it's a nice trio. So that's what'll be happening. And then the European, uh, so the U S tour is a five week run. And then, um, and then the, the European tour is going to be, uh, February through the beginning of March. So it's a four week tour. Um, and yeah, so we've got a, a bunch of bunch of countries we're hitting over in Europe. Unfortunately, we're not, I don't think we're playing Scotland. I'm sorry. No, you don't. You're going as north as Birmingham, I think. Uh, but not so, you know, it, it all boils down racist. to... What is it? You're racist against Scottish people. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, that's because we can't understand a fucking word you say. <laughs> Pardon us for inventing the language. <laughs> what? What did he say that I thought? <laughs> invented golf too, I think. <laughs> no, we trust me. I, I we've been wanting to go back there, and it's just a matter of having the right promoter uh, that can bring us over there. You know. Um, and it depends on like guarantees. It's so expensive for people that don't know. I mean, touring is very expensive, but you know, tour buses are, I mean, I probably double over in Europe. I mean, a, a four week run in Europe would cost you probably 90 grand for a bus. Um, that doesn't include your fuel, which is two to three times more expensive than the U S um, and you've got, crew pay band pay vat taxes in all these different countries and it's like it's a it's quite an ordeal and then there's logistics and what venue is available on this day because that's when we're over here and then there's a thousand other bands playing in that same area and that's not available and it's a big whole thing a lot of people say oh you're not coming here as if it was like something we really had to do with but um so yeah, that's what's going on with Queensryche. And then, uh, you know, we're start starting to uh, uh, prepare for songwriting section uh, sessions for the next album. So, you know, we're all looking at our calendars. Hey, when can we all get together in a room? Because we're, we're doing one-off fly dates so much, you know, we're home for four, three or four or five days, maybe. And then we're out again. So when you get home, it's like, you just, you, you don't you want to spend time with your family or whatever um yeah and then as far as me personally i'm every day uh working on my solo album writing songs so um i've got you know guitars here and uh just every kind of ideas that all these ideas i have i'm capturing and then starting to put things in different you know this piece would go with great with that idea over here and kind of starting to like form songs. I've got a couple few songs that are pretty much done. Um, you know, uh, I might tweak a few things here and there, but they're, they're pretty much completed songs with, with vocals and everything. Uh, and the, the stuff I'm doing on this record is, uh, is I kind of want to say it's, it's different than the first record I did. This has a, I kind of want to say more diversity this has a lot more diversity. So I want to introduce a lot more clean guitar. I want to introduce um, more spacious musical pieces instead of just like what I considered more of a thrash record that's melodic. It's definitely going to have thrash elements, but I want to bring in some of the melodic death black metal things that I have. I want to do um, more, more singing stuff that's more like sing-songy. Um, 
so yeah, and and I think I might um, make some phone calls to some friends, some uh, some great guitar players to maybe contribute some solos. You know, um, I don't want to name names right now, but like big time heavy hitter, heavy hitters. To I'd like to reach out and say, hey, would you would you be cool throwing a solo down on on a song or two? So I'd like to like pull in some other people that I've always wanted to work with for some things like that. But uh, yeah, that's what's going on with me. And um, that's pretty much it, man. Just 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 fly dates, ground tours coming up. And then we're going to start digging into songwriting sessions for the next Queensryche album. Right. I saw you guys here in Columbus about two years ago. This is nothing you want to relive, but I'm going to bring it up anyways. So you were doing Empire here at the Newport about two years ago, and the power went out like with 20 seconds left in the song. Can you hear it call it? Nope. I can't hear a thing. But you guys played like you're still playing to a stadium the last 20 seconds with no electricity. Like the pros. I, you think, I vaguely remember that. Yeah, it was like <laughs> vaguely. Out. Yeah. And then we were all on edge. Is it going to happen again for the rest of the show? And it didn't. Well, yeah, if you guys can, you know, make a show, uh, just reach out to me, you know, I'll, I'll make sure you're taken care of and, uh, you know, maybe come back, meet the band or something after the show or whatever. Get get a get a, you know, a little bit of hang time. Um, but, yeah, that's uh, that's what's going on. And, and uh, send Pete my best and our best from the band. And and I appreciate you having me on the show. It's fun. I get to learn a lot. I get to learn about other bands you know, that I, I'm just not aware of. Yeah, and I've got, <laughs> I've got a bunch of tabs open that when we're done, I'm probably going to, my wife and I are going to have some dinner and I'm going to experiment and listen to some of these tunes. And yeah, it's fun. It, it's the always good. Influencers are always influenced back by the influencers we hang out with. Yeah, right. Yeah, for sure. It was fun cool. having well, you. Thanks. I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to sit it's all back good, with man. us. So great. Davey, Greg, Thank I'll you. see you on the Monsters Den next week when we talk about movies that have been sitting around for a while that we never got around to watching that we're finally going to watch for this episode on the monsters den until yeah. then check us out on the web www.seatranquility.org or on facebook or on youtube all together all the damn all time the damn hit that subscribe button if you haven't already make sure you hit the no notification bell so you're alerted of uh new content like this one as it Thanks. drops and this one was a good one, so you want to be alerted on this one. Smash that like button, god damn it. Yeah, smash yeah. the like button. Damn it, it's easy to share it. Share it with your granny. She'll love it. Yes. Um, and we Thanks, also guys. have a Ko-Fi link if you want to contribute to the channel. We got a merch page out there. You can get that cool hat. You can get a cool t-shirt like this one. Ooh. I think I think Pete's going to hell for this one. I, I got to get one of those. Yeah, like this is that. badass. Yeah, Pete gave me this one. It was That's cool. really cool. Yeah, so go out there, get one of those. Uh, we have that cameo page. Slide Pete some money, and he'll hook you <laughs> up with Todd, and you can play a solo on his upcoming solo album. Todd will let you play. No, he won't. <laughs> no, you won't. Look, well, it depends how much money you got. Maybe he'll. Hey, hey, it's all about that. So <laughs> until then, uh, the next show when we have a new crew and new reviews. I am Jamie Laszlo for Davey, Craig, and Mr. Todd Latore. I'm out. Later. Thanks, guys. <laughs>